Hey everyone, I hope you are all doing well. Today we're taking another look at OpenAI Codex. Now, if you haven't heard of Codex before, it's an ML model that OpenAI released that is essentially able to generate code in various languages. So it's like a language model that was trained on all sorts of different code from GitHub. Here you can see some of the, or all the languages that you can use it for. And it is very impressive. If you haven't seen any videos on Codex before or anything like this, I think you'll be happily surprised at how competent competent it is and how many things it's actually able to do. So if I do, just to show you an example real quick, I say print hello world, you should see that it should be able to do that with ease. Yep, and it does it multiple times, nice. So it writes the code for us, right? All we have to do is put in a comment. So what are we gonna be doing with Codex today? Well, we are actually going to be trying to recreate Codex with Codex. Now, take that with a grain of salt, right? Because Let's, let's be real, uh, with one single comment, OpenAI Codex is not going to be able to reinvent itself. It's something that was made by many talented engineers and research engineers and scientists. It's not something that's super easy to create. But what we can probably do in this video is create an AI that can generate code, even if it's not quite as good as OpenAI's Codex. Now, I hope that is uh, <laughs> exciting enough for you all. If if that doesn't meet your standard of excitement, I, I don't know what will in terms of these sorts of things. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's essentially what we're gonna wanna do as we go. I'll sort of share my thought process with you. And yeah, this is unscripted again. I'm, I'm sort of getting into these unscripted videos. I think these, I, I kind of like the casual format of these. Hopefully you don't mind. I don't wanna make you guys wait any longer. So last thing I'll say is do consider subscribing to the channel if you like this type of content. Uh, but without further ado, let's get into it. So let's first start by selecting our model. DaVinci Codex is what we're gonna want. This is their, their best Codex model. And let's up the response length a little bit. We want to generate a little, this is how much code we generate at once. Uh, and next thing we're gonna need to do is just start typing in our comment here that describes what we wanna do. And let me make sure I'm zoomed in enough for everyone to see this. So we essentially want to uh, make a program. So let's say the program and I'm just going to describe what I want. So creates and trains a model to generate Python code. Now we're going to be doing Python code specifically to keep things simple. And this is going to be using, I'm going to use a GP2 base model, or at least uh, G, let's do GP2 small as a base model. And if you haven't seen GPT, the sort of GPT family of models, they're models that can do all sorts of language modeling. So starting with GP2 uh, as a sort of pre-trained model, will make this process a lot faster and easier for us. Now, we're actually going to be using data. I found this 150K Python data set. And essentially what it is, it's, it's just 150,000 Python files that were scraped from GitHub. So I'm going to give it this data. We can essentially describe the format the data is in, and hopefully it should be able to pick it up and use it without actually seeing it. So this is a general description. If we go ahead and generate this, like we could generate from here, right? We're probably not gonna get great results though because you know, it's, yeah, it's importing some things, but the issue is we still haven't specified lots of things. This is actually, <laughs> this is already really good though, right? It's importing all the right things, GP2. Yeah, so, so this is already impressive, but it's not quite, uh, I wanna specify more. So let's delete this and let's specify some more before we start generating. And I will help. I will help it out as we go. If I spot errors, I'll I'll rewrite comments and have it regenerate code. I think that makes sense because this is such a, a difficult problem. So the first thing we want to do is let's see. I had something actually. I had some notes written. Let me see if I can find those really quickly. Okay. So I found the notes I was looking for. I, I reworded this very slightly. Still the same thing basically. So the first thing that we want to do is download and load a pre-trained version of GPT-2 small. So this will essentially load the pre-trained model that's already been trained, but not on code specifically, right? Just general words. So this transfer learning, it will speed up our training process. I only have so much compute power to use, right? You know, I can't retrain uh, this whole thing on just my, my weak little GPU. Now we're using the small model. You know, the small GPT-2 is still fairly large. So I, I think we'll be fine on that for at least a sort of proof of concept. What we want to do next is load data from the data directory. Now the data that I'm giving it, as I said, is just those Python files. I can actually, this is where I'm going to be actually pasting the code and running it. So you can see if we go into data, there's all these different, uh, we have, uh, there's a Python file here. There's Python files here. There's all sorts of Python files. So I'm just going to, we can put this wherever we want and specify it to look for it wherever we want. I'm just going to specify it to be in the data directory. 
So that's where I put it. Next thing we're going to want to do is clean the data and use the, the GPT-2 uh, tokenizer to prepare the data for training. So once we have all those Python files, right, we need to clean up the data. There might be some weird stuff like get rid of next line uh, characters if, if that really matters. Actually, I'm not sure we want to do that, uh, but we're going to clean it up in some ways and we need to tokenize it and essentially break it down into a format that the computer can understand or our neural network can understand, whatever the GPT-2 model expects, essentially. Step number four is going to be to split the data into training and test uh, and testing partitions, partitions. This is, this is you know, we want to test and see how it does, an unbiased estimate of how our model is performing. Then we want to train the model in a semi-supervised fashion with the following task. So this is how we will essentially be doing the training the specific task we are going to be doing is, let's see, feed the model a portion of the code for an example and have it have it predict the next token. Now, this is one way that these models are very commonly trained, right? Uh, is you, you have like some text that says, she went to the market and then you feed the neural network this part of it, right? The she went to the, and then you have it predict the market, right? So it learns, uh, it's essentially, an, it's autocomplete on steroids is, is what this is essentially going to be. To be fair, that's basically what Codex is as far as I'm aware. <laughs> and then the last step is going to be to test the model on the next token generation. Generation task and report the metrics. Awesome. So that is what we want to do. All we have to do now, I'm only saying all we have to do, we'll see, it's, is generate, right? So so let's generate. I'm going to turn, I'm actually going to keep the response length, I'm actually going to keep the response length not too high because we can always adjust it and we can always generate more. So let's, let's get going. Let's see what this generates. So some imports, some PyTorch. I should have specified PyTorch. Looks like it figured that out. So, okay, loads up the token IO. Okay, so it loads up the tokenizer. That's good. That's what we'll tokenize our input. Loads up the model. So the language modeling head, uh, I believe this is the type of GP2 model we wanted. And then it opens up this data. Ah, so it opens up the data directory dot slash data slash Python data. Okay, so this is an issue, right? Because if we go back to our data over here, you can see that it's broken up into many folders uh, of varying you know, depths and that the Python folders are inside of these. So what are we going to, oh my, what are we going to do about that? Well, we can actually just delete what it's deleted so far. And this is why I didn't want to make the response link, response length too long. And we can now specify this in, in more detail. So we can say load data from the dot data directory directory the data I guess we can say the data directory contains many more recursive or many more folders so we can say use glob so glob is a specific uh, thing we can use to get get a bunch of file names from this right so we can use glob to recursively search or get all dot pi files. So I do have to specify to a large degree what exactly we want to do. Maybe I don't have to specify this much, but the more I specify, the better, right? The better idea uh, it will have of what to do. So let's see if it can do this. Imports glob, makes a data. So, and then, okay. Hmm. So I'm not actually sure if this is going to work or not. This might mean there needs to be exactly one file in between them. I guess we'll see. Either way, we're not training on all the data, so this will probably be okay. But then it opens up each of these files for file in. Oh, actually, I found an issue right here. So for file in this, open. Oh, no, this works. This works. R as F. And then we read the data and append it to this right here. Next thing that we want to do is clean the data. So remember, we did want to do this. 
remove the new line characters. This isn't something we actually want to do, right? We do want to be predicting new line characters. So let's get rid of that. Tabs, we also want to keep those. Double spaces. Double spaces we can remove, right? Uh, and replace with single spaces. Remove the single spaces. That's definitely something we don't want to do. This whole thing is not very uh, helpful. Remove empty lines. You know, I think empty lines are actually a good thing, right? Because sometimes it can help with a uh, it can help with formatting and stuff. So let, let's actually just get rid of this clean the data part. And I'm going to remove it from up here. Instead of cleaning the data, we'll kind of just let it go as it is. And that's OK, right? Because we don't, this, this hasn't looked at the data. It won't necessarily know exactly what we need to do to clean the data. So I'll give it the pass on that. So where is uh, clean the data? We will just say use the tokenizer to do the thing. Cool. Uh, so that, that should be fine. Next, it says use the GP chosen to prepare the data for training. Uh, tastes cool. So let's let's let it continue. Let's let it do its thing. Tokenize function. Okay, so it returns tokenizer dot encode. Next, detokenize encode decode pad. Okay, so I guess we'll just keep going. Hopefully, that all works out. <laughs> So now splitting it into training and testing partitions. Let's see what happens here. So split data. Hmm. I'm not sure if this is going to work as expected. So let's actually go ahead and copy what we have so far and see if it works. Because if it doesn't work, we're going to want to you know, nip these issues right here before they get too big to deal with. So we have Visual Studio here. Copy the code over. Let's open up a Python terminal. Oop. Uh, we are going to want to open up a command prompt. We're going to want to say python test.py. Now, one thing I will add on to this is I put a lot of data in here. So let's uh, let's put a limit on this and I'll just do this manually. So do i equals in enumerate. And then we'll just say if i is greater than a thousand we will break so we can we can remove this later if we want but this will just set a limit of a thousand files to use for now and let's see if this runs into any errors okay downloaded something ah so that must be the gpt2 model that it's downloading in the tokenizer looks like it's doing well okay so it actually has a lot to download well we do that let's actually write some print statements right here so let's print the train data and let's get the zeroth instance of it after each of these. And we're going to want to see how this looks and see if it's about what we would expect. Because it's very it's very easy to sort of do some formatting on data, not realize it's wrong, and then have to deal with it a lot later on. So checking it now will probably hopefully save us a lot of pain later on. So that downloader, that's pretty quick. And I guess now it should be loading the data, right? So loading the data here. OK, so we ran into an error. Good. So pad sequences. Let's see, sequences 0.size list object has no attribute size. So I guess that's an issue. Maybe this should be, where is that happening? Pad sequence RNN. You know what I'm going to do is I really, I'm really not a fan of how it's doing this whole thing. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have it regenerate this. And I'll be right back uh, after I regenerate it and see if we get something that is working on the next go. Okay, I'm back and I figured everything out. Now I want to be fully transparent because the whole idea of this video is to give you all an idea of how well this actually works, right? So I only did one more generation and this is roughly what I got. Now I did have a little trouble and the trouble ended up actually being the fact that this glob, I had specified using the glob library to get all these different files, right? As it turned out, that was not super useful. So I did slightly reword the way I did this. I said, essentially go through all of these uh, different folders at varying depths to get all the .py folders. And I didn't mention the glob library or, or the module or anything else. And I just kind of let it do its own thing. And it looks like that ended up working for the best. So sometimes it, you know, it even it actually is better uh, to not get in the way of it, it looks like. But this is, for the most part, what it came up with by itself on its next, on its next generation. So you can see here that we grab all of the files, and then we actually define a class for the code data set. And it's very simply, whenever we try and grab something, it just encodes the data using the tokenizer and returns it. Then it does this training test split. This actually uh, is a lot simpler. This whole thing is a lot simpler than last time, which is kind of nice. And then it creates data loaders. 
So I already copied this into this over here. If you come over to my test folder. So I'm actually, I also moved this over to a Python notebook, uh, an IPython notebook, just so it's easier to sort of see and ran it all and it's working fairly well. So we download the model, uh, we load the data set and I actually just, put, I, I wrote this myself just so we can actually see an example of what's in the data set, make sure it's working. So we take the train data loader and we just, yeah, we essentially just print out the first thing that comes up after this is finished loading. There we go. You can see these are indeed indices. It looks like there's an error here. Token indice, indices sequence length is longer than specified maximum length. Yeah, yada, yada, yada. That is actually maybe going to be an issue later. We can work with uh, truncating this later. For now, I just want to get a working example. So that's pretty, that's pretty great. We got all this going. It's actually quite a bit. Now, what was the next step? I'm actually forgetting. We can move on to, so it's use the tokenizer, it's split the data up. Now we can actually train the model. So let's just run this and see what happens, I guess. We'll do another generation. Let's see, define loss function, yeah. Optimizer, okay. Then for 10 epochs, it loops. It looks like, okay. Let's see what's going on here. So. Loss function optimizer, we do need those, so that's good. This is very low learning rate. I guess this is a, maybe you typically do use low learning rates, I guess, for these large models, so maybe that makes sense. Uh, but let's see, we loop through batches in the train data loader. So the gradient, so batch zero, get the batch data. I'm not sure what's actually in here. This, this knows better than I do, honestly. I don't know why we're indexing zero. Uh, there's probably a reason. Oh, maybe it's like the, let's see, so it gets data. Then the data from everything, what is this? Hmm, oh, I see. So for every example, it gets up to, no, this is the last token. And then for each example, for the input data, it gets everything up to the last token. Makes sense. And then you get the model output. So the model, we put in input data, we get the output. So hopefully this is the expected token. I'm not actually sure. Then we calculate the loss of the loss function, go backward, uh, do a back propagation and then step. And then it looks like this didn't finish generating. So let's actually let it finish real quick. I'm actually, uh, oh, and then it's starting the test. Now I'm going to be honest with you all. <laughs> I have no clue if this will work. It looks like, uh, it, it might, it might not. So, uh, that, that's the end of the program though. You see, if I hit submit, it doesn't generate anymore. Uh, that actually means it's, it's come to the end of this. So let's actually copy this in here and see if it works. I, I'm i very curious. I'm very curious to see if this will work or not. So we don't actually need this anymore. Let's, oh dang it, I didn't mean to do that. I mean to recopy this. So let's copy all this, go over here and paste in here. So I want to just format this kind of nicely so it's a bit easier with us for us to work with. So let's define those. And then for our epochs, we are gonna have the chest and train epochs in different cells so we can run them separately. And we are going to see what happens, I guess. Are we using are we using the CPU? Let's see, does it say GPU or CUDA? Yeah, so this is gonna be on the CPU. This is gonna be incredibly inefficient. I should have specified to train on the GPU. That's actually kind of my bad. Uh, but we can adjust that. So let's just run this and see what happens. Let's see, okay, we get in there. We get in there, that's sad. Two Mendy indices for tensor of dimension one. Yeah, this looks like it might not be super easy to debug. So let me go ahead and take a look at this and then I'll get back to you all. Okay, I am back and I'm not gonna lie, I just spent <laughs> a long time, a long, long time trying to figure out what was going wrong with this. And you know, I figured out the issue, but it's essentially the issue, right, is that it's not using this the proper way uh, well, one was that the tokens, the, the sequences were too long, so we can truncate those, that's no problem. But the other was that it's not just, it's not using this model the proper way in the first place, so this wasn't going to work. That doesn't mean this can't work, so I think the best thing we can do now is to sort of scrap what we have uh, on this point and just try regenerating it. You know, this can generate many, many things and it can generate us different answers. So I think we should try and give it a little bit of a helping hand by specifying how it could go about doing this and then trying to regenerate. So let's do that. Let's go through here. And I'm going to kind of put some more comments as we go to sort of explain to the model what exactly I think it should be doing. 
So what this model should essentially be doing, and I'm about to write out here, is it should be passing in the sequence, the sequence of input characters. So pass the sequence into the model, the I should say the input sequence, into the model as both the input and the labels. And the reason we should do that is that's essentially how the model is built. It, it, the labels should be what the input is because it's predicting the next character for every single input character instead of just the last one. So before what it was doing, if we go back over here, uh, where is it? So you can see it's breaking it down into the input data and then just the next token at the end of that input data. Instead, we just want to pass in everything for the input and for the output. So let's see if it can get that. So pass the input sequence into the model as both the input and the labels. The model will output a loss that can be used for training. Okay, let's see if it can get this now. I'm, I'm crossing my finger. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> oh no, so as you can see, it's just repeating the exact same thing at this point. So what we can do is we can turn up the, where is it, the frequency penalty. So the higher this is, the less likely it will be to repeat the same thing. So let's try this. Okay, so it only <laughs> printed out twice that time. So model.train, oh, oh, it's still going, okay. So model.train puts the model into training mode, output equals the batch and batch. Now the batch, I believe, yeah, I think that should actually work. Um, the loss equals outputs zero. Now I'm not sure if that's how we get the loss. I don't think that will actually work, but it might. Uh, we backwards and step, this is looking better though. This is looking better. And then it looks like after we've completed one epoch, we will go into eval mode and then we will go through the test loader and do the same thing. This, this isn't looking too bad. So let's try this uh, and it will print out the test and then save the model. Okay, now this might actually work. So let's go ahead and try this. And it is kind of funny, it printed it twice and it was like, nope, <laughs> I can't take any more, any more loss, but we'll, we'll copy it as is and, and see how this goes. Um, so let's get rid of everything we had for the training before and put this bad boy in. Now we can copy, do we want to copy anything else? I guess this is fine. So I don't think this is going to work, this loss right here. So well, let, let's just see what happens. Let's see what happens. Um, index out of range stuff. That's right. I should have told it to limit, I'm just going to delete this. Uh, I, I should have told it to limit the number of tokens it can use. Now I'm just going to, I happen to know off the top of my head that this I think has 1,024 is the max limit of tokens. So I'm just going to put up to 1,000 tokens. Um, sorry, sorry, I'm not doing this for the model. I, I've, I've actually been here for several hours trying to debug, not several hours, like an hour trying to debug this now, and I, <laughs> I feel a little bit tired. Um, so I, I'm, this is a bit scuffed. And now we don't need to be printing that anymore because it looks like it's working. Okay. Okay, I think, uh, maybe I shouldn't be saying this too early, but I think it would have crashed by now if there was an error. Oh. Epoch zero, batch zero. The loss is 2.749. Not too bad, not too bad. Now, there is one issue with this. Uh, well, there's actually a few issues with this. One, this is <laughs> very, very scuffed. Uh, that's okay. For example, using like one batch at a time is very inefficient. And the other issue is that this is on the CPU. We do not want to be doing this on the CPU. That is incredibly slow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video real quick and I'll come back to you all. So yeah, that's that's definitely faster. It's loss 1.6. This is still taking a long time though. Um, I wonder, oh, it's because it's printing it out every, only one, every 100 batches. Oh, so actually before that wasn't too bad. So we're starting at this loss and let's see where we go. I'm going to, so that went down, but it's only, it's not that much, so we, we can't say anything for sure yet. I'm going to take a break and I'm gonna come back. And when I come back, we are going to actually see if this has improved at all. Oh, never mind, because we have an issue. So I'll come back once I fix the issue and then I'll run this and then I will show you all how it does. We are back. I made some minor changes. For example, I uh, I made sure that this wouldn't run for too long, so I. I uh, added some minor things, but I haven't changed anything big. And I ran the code, it's fully working now. And you, as you can see, we have 
working training here. So the loss is going up and down. I'm not sure if that's because we just haven't trained for long enough, which definitely might be the case, or what exactly is going on here, but I only have so much time, so hopefully this will work. I guess we'll see if it does or doesn't, you know, if uh, whether, <laughs> whether or not this works or does not work, you guys will see the truth. So I also ran the test. This isn't the best way to do testing though, uh, but anyway, it's all running. The model is trained, and that means now we can actually test the model and see if it actually writes code. So that is the one last thing we are actually going to be generating. So if we go over to our thing right here, what we can do is this all looks good. Um, yeah, I think this is all good. So the last thing we have to do is just, I'm gonna write a comment and essentially I'm gonna say, use the generate, uh, the model.generate function to test to get test outputs and we're going to submit this and we are going to see if this gives us anything so hmm this is not what i wanted oh model did generate model dot generate the batch and it gives a length a temperature okay i don't think we want Hmm, I'm not sure if this will work, but let's try this out. So let's copy this over. And essentially all we're trying to do now is input actual code and see actual code, right? We've been able to see these losses, right? And lower losses are better, uh, but it doesn't, you know, it's it's kind of hard to tell exactly what's going on unless we actually test this out ourselves. So let's copy this and paste this in here. But we'll just take this and model.generate. So we'll take the batch. I forget if we need to do anything with the batch. I think it should be good. Uh, let's see if it works. Oh. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, this is interesting. Well, I guess we should print out what the, was in the batch, right? Because we are going to be generating stuff after the batch. Oh, this is what's after the batch, but what's before the batch? Hmm. And also length set to then, but max length is set to 20. Okay, so we should fix that. Let, let's go ahead and, and uh, fix this up a little bit. Yeah, so, okay. New example, so it starts by priming with this. No, yeah, it starts by priming with this, import unit test and then try. And then what it generates is, is is this. Well, that's not very good. What about this example? So in this case, we give it this and it gives us this. So it's just, it's just repeating the same thing over and over and over again. So that's not very good. So what we can do is one thing, let's uh, make the the repetition penalty, repetition penalty, 1.2. I don't know if that's good or not, but let's give it a go. And we will do this. Let's uh, make this a little bit more defined. Let's see how this goes. Hmm. Hmm. So new example, it gives it <laughs> this copyright claim and then it asks it to make some. Okay. So this is like, this program is distributed under the MIT license. It does some imports. It's a function, the function. Hmm. <laughs> this is not great. I'm not going to lie. Uh, okay, we'll do one final thing. And for this final thing, what we are going to do is we are going to have our input code. Yeah, input code. And it's going to be something like... Uh, Prince hello world. So we'll feed in this comment, Prince hello world. And then hopefully it will print hello world. I, I don't know if that will actually work, but I guess we'll find out. So let's uh, say the batch equals torch.tensor of tokenizer.encode, the same thing that we were doing up there. Uh, encode input code.unsweet0.2. Let's grab this. Um, hmm. The model that generate. So we're running the batch through. And yeah, I guess we'll see if this works. So Prince Hello World is what we have. Uh, and then we get from <laughs> to Django, it imports some random stuff. Def main, print hello world. <laughs> Well, uh, 
It's definitely doing some print hello world stuff. <laughs> From pyface dot face dot face dot face dot face dot face dot face. Well, um, <laughs> you know, I've, I've tried my best. I, I think that's all we could do for now, though. I think this really just needed some more time to train. Unfortunately, I don't really have the time or the, uh, the GPU power to do that. But I hope this was at least interesting and gave some insight into how this all works and what sort of the limit of OpenAI's codex is. In the last video I did, we saw it work almost flawlessly to build a vision model, which was quite impressive, right? It could do MNIST very well. This time we tried to generate Python code and clearly we've, we've run into some shortcomings here, right? Uh, at first it wasn't generating the right thing. We specified it and it did generate some stuff. Uh, but at the end of the day, this was very much a need to be modified by hand to work. Now, the, the outputs are probably more of a result of just lack of training time. So I wouldn't blame Codex for that. But yeah, I mean, I, I guess you take it for what you will, right? We, we It did generate still quite a bit of code, over 100 lines of code that mostly worked. So, you know, I, I think it worked okay. I'm still very impressed by this. Anyway, that's it. That's all I have for this time. If you like this type of content and you appreciate the video, do consider subscribing. It, it means a lot and it knows it, it lets me know that you guys want more content like this. So I hope you all have a great day and I hope to catch you next time. Thank you so much for watching.